relax, I've done the research for you. In this video, I'm going to give you a list of all of the companies within the ASX 200 that have a dividend yield of 5% or more. So this is for all of you that want to invest for the income but you'll probably get some growth as well. And you can follow along and see how I do this so that you might wanna do it yourself too. So if you're not in Australia, you can use an index from your own country and make your own list. So there are three main things that I look for when choosing a dividend stock to invest in. The first is that they have a high market capitalization. So the biggest companies on the stock exchange if you just want to simplify. Market capitalization is one of the easiest ways to narrow down your list and I like using the top 200 companies. So we'll be just concentrating on the ASX 200 in this video. So next I look for a dividend yield of 5% or more. Occasionally I'll go lower if the company is really good but generally because I invest for the income now. That's my benchmark. So next I want a stable dividend. So high stability just means that the dividend isn't going to fluctuate a lot each payment. So generally I look for something above 80% stability. That way I can reasonably estimate what my future dividends are going to be based on the past dividends. I'll usually also go and look at the actual dividend payments that they've made just to get a good idea of what to expect. And just a quick note on this, some people assume because you want a dividend that's nice and stable, that's nice and high, that 100% dividend stability is the best way to go. But that's not actually always true. 100% stability means that the dividend is the same all of the time, it doesn't change. That can be fine if the company has a high dividend yield and you just want a regular payment of um, the same amount all of the time, but it does mean it's not growing. It's fixed it doesn't change. So keep that in mind, stability is important, but you do want some growth. So you don't want it to be too stable, too fixed. Now there are other things I look at as well, like if the dividend is franked so you can get the tax benefits. I also go and have a look at what the company growth has been like, but those are the three main things that I look for. Okay, so let's start. First is getting your list of the ASX 200. You can find this list of companies at a few different places. Wikipedia has a list, although sometimes it's out of date. Sometimes your online broker will have a full list of all of the components within the ASX 200. You can do a search online and usually find which companies are included. I particularly like this site. I am not affiliated with it in any way. I just find it really helpful and it's generally up to date and will give you a downloadable CSV file. Once you've downloaded the file, you can open it up in your spreadsheet program. I usually delete the sector, the market capitalization, and all of the other rest of things because I just don't find them useful for calculating the dividend yield and that. All I want is just the list of companies. Now then I'll add another column to put my dividend yield in and then my dividend stability. This is where the work is going to come in because you're going to actually manually enter these. Sometimes online brokers have that search functionality uh, already incorporated in it, which means you can go in and just say, you want the ASX 200 with dividend yields of 5% and it will do that automatically for you. But there's something I just like doing it manually. So go ahead and find the dividend yield of each of the companies. You can get this in your online broker or Yahoo Finance has it online too if you want just like a free site to go and look at. Usually the dividend stability is shown too, although it's not shown in all cases. It won't be shown on the free sites. It's fine if it's not included though, don't worry too much about it. So this can be really time consuming. It actually took me an hour and a half to do this one and it can be kind of boring. I mean, it is just data entry after all. So put on some music so it feels like the time is going faster. And once you're done, you've got your list. Here's mine.
So out of the 200 companies within the ASX 200, 48 of them had dividend yields of 5% or more. All of these also had a dividend stability of over 80%, so that's great. And a good number of them were 100% franked, also great. So here is a list of the companies right now, but be aware that this is a snapshot of this point in time. It's going to change each time the company pays a dividend, the figure gets recalculated, and as the price, the stock price goes up and down, that figure is also recalculated. So this is a, just a snapshot of right now. So let's do this in alphabetical order, shall we? Here's the list. We have Adelaide Brighton with 5.8%, Abacus with 5%, AGL has a yield of 5.6%, ANZ Bank is 6.2%, Osnet 5.7%, Illumina 10.6%, Bendigo Bank 6.7%, BHP 5.1%, Bank of Queensland 7.7%, Commonwealth Bank 5.1%, Cromwell Property 5.1%, Charter Hall 6.1%, Crown Resorts 5.2%, STA Health 5.7%, Fortescue Metals, 7.3%, G8, 9%, Growth Point Property, 5.4%, GWA, 5.1%, Harvey Norman, 6%, Inghams, 5.1%, Janice Henderson, 5.2%, Macmillan Shakespeare, 5.8%, Met Cash, 5.1%, National Australia Bank, 6.5%, Nine Entertainment, 5.5%, New Hope, 7.8%, Pendle Group, 5.2%, Perpetual, 5.6%, Parenti Global, 5.2%, Platinum Asset, 5.7%, Rio Tinto, 5.5%, The Centre Group, 5.8%, SCA Property, 5.2%, Stockland, 5.7%, The Star Entertainment Group, 5.1%, Smart Group, 7.1%, Sky City, 5.6%, Spark Infrastructure 7.1%, Spark New Zealand 5%, Super Limited 5.3%, Suncorp 5.7%, STH9 Media 8.1%, URW 6.2%, Vicinity Centres 6.3%, Viva Energy 5.2%, Westpac 6.7%, Whitehaven Coal 7.1%, and Woodside Petroleum 5%. So any of these companies could be a good criteria for your dividend portfolio. You just need to decide what criteria is most important to you. And yes, I am giving you a link to download this spreadsheet so you can use it however you need to. You're welcome. So this should be helpful for cutting out some of the research on which companies to invest in. And that's it. Or is it? Maybe you want even more data breakdown on this. So in next week's video, I'm going to take this spreadsheet and break down each of the months that each of the companies pay their dividends. So most companies in Australia pay dividends twice a year, but each company does it in different months. So if you're trying to structure your portfolio for monthly dividends like I do, this next video might make it easier because that's what we'll be doing. This isn't necessary. You don't have to structure your portfolio this way. It's just something I like to do. So I hope you've enjoyed this video. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you found it useful. I will see you next time. Take care. Bye.